On the 46 years anniversary of struggle activist Ahmed Timol's death, we look back at the journey that the family went through to finally get justice for the murdered icon. And my mother would have been very happy. But can be a victory? I don't think it can be a victory. Because someone has died. She lost a son. And we also look at the fates of the security branch police found to have participated in the cover-up of the murder. And as more families come forward, they also want justice for their murdered loved ones. All what we again got from the uh, media is that uh, he pushed himself and uh, nobody is responsible for his death because he killed himself. Timur's death was brought about by an act of having been pushed from the 10th floor or roof of the John Foster Square building to fall to the ground, such act having been committed through Dolus Eventualis as the form of intent and prima facie amounting to murder. It is a... Judge Billy Mortley uttered the words which the Timol family and those he worked with in the struggle had been waiting for. A moment of relief that the 29-year-old son, brother and uncle did not commit suicide. I was five years old when my uncle was uh, taken away from the family by security branch police officers and I have very, very precious memories of him. After his, after his death and his killing, I would accompany my late grandfather to the local cemetery in Rudapur, where I would go and recite prayers at my uncle's grave. Curious to know what happened, Imtiaz Kaji started the journey of finding justice for his uncle, armed with the passion to restore his name as a martyr of the struggle who fought till the end. And the turning point came in January 1978, when I was 12 years old, and my other uncle Mohammed had left the country to go into exile. And hence, I started asking many, many questions to my grandparents. I wanted to know why did Uncle Mohammed leave the country? Why was Uncle Ahmed killed? And uh, I would read newspaper cuttings. Ahmed's brother, Mohammed Timul, himself a struggle veteran who also suffered arrests and torture at the hands of the security branch, remembers the time he spent with his brother before he was arrested. Ahmed was an extremely friendly person very sensitive, not physically strong person, but very strong willed and minded. He had a compassion for the poor. He had empathy particularly towards the oppressed people in South Africa and in particularly for, for the African people who are in the majority. I was uh, 22, 23 years old when Ahmed got killed, but uh, we, in 1966, Ahmed left, uh, so when I look back, probably only about 16, 17 years of my life that I actually spent with him. So he was a person who, would, at an early age, he made us understand that it's important that you read and that it's important you get to know what's happening in this world as well as, as, well as the literally world that you are in. But a year before his 30th birthday, Ahmed's life was cut short. The first inquest into his death rendered his death a suicide. On the afternoon of the 27th um, October, between around 6 o'clock, two policemen came to my mother and broke news to her that your son is dead. That's how my mother got him. My father was in mosque. The first inquest was a farce, a complete farce. All the security policemen from Johannesburg, who it is said was responsible for the interrogation of Ahmed, right? And they all claimed that they never laid a finger on him, that uh, he cooperated. Uh, they had no business to assault him because he was a big fish, right? And that uh, he took his own life at the end of the day because he was frightened to go to jail for 20 years or more. 
We never ever believed that Ahmed had taken his life because Salim Asop was detained with Ahmed. Word came out that he was lying dangerously ill at the Johannesburg General uh, Hospital. So we never accepted that Ahmed that killed and no one ever accepted it because if Salim was brutally tortured, right, uh, how could they have not touched Ahmed when they say he was a big fish? It was very evident, you know, from just reading the newspaper cuttings at the time, that in my view, you know, the Amanda State was completely biased. And the security branch officers' versions were all corroborated by each other. And my, grand, my grandmother specifically was branded a liar by Magistrate de Villiers, you know, when she stated that uh, security branch officers had told her that she had failed to give Uncle Ahmed a hiding, and hence they were going to give him a good hiding. My grandparents were totally devastated uh, at the loss of their eldest son. And I think from the time of his death until they both departed this world, they were broken individuals. Ahmed's mother appeared before the TRC and poured out her heart about the loss of her son. I still need to know who killed my son and how is it possible that he would jump from the 10th floor and commit suicide. He was a teacher at the Indian school and was well liked by the pupils and I cannot be expected to forgive at this stage. And then Desmond Tutu asked her, Mrs. Timor, what do you want us to do? What do you want? She said, I want the truth. I want the truth what they did to my son. I do not accept what they say happened to him. And she said in closing, if I cannot get it in this world, I will get it in a year after. Um, and taking charge of your own destiny is a mindset and it's something that should start at a very young age. I started when I was around about three or something because I have a bunch of paintings in the office. I have a teacher that teaches me and my class how to do business and he was the one who taught me. Being an entrepreneur makes you money wise. Before everyone spent their money, I would sell the little things I painted and I'd sell my drawings and stuff like that. In business, it is important to keep record of all your transactions. I have a passion and I love making anything, so I chose to make Play-Doh and I'm passionate about it. Catch Bupilong every Friday at 17.30. John Forster Square, the notorious prison from which struggle icons perished. Ahmed Timol was also said to have jumped from this window, located in room 1026, the 10th floor of the police building. The second inquest into his death promised to be a dramatic recount of history after 46 years. The state and the victim's family lawyers pulled no punches. Those on the wrong side of history offered no information. Mr. Sons, my colleague, Mr. Pretorius, has asked you whether you have heard of or are familiar with certain kinds of assault and torture 
uh, that, that were perpetrated. There's evidence that these acts of torture were perpetrated against detainees at John Foster Square. Detainees have alleged, detainees who were detained around the same time as Mr. Timo, have alleged that they suffered such torture. Well, the, 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 there's evidence before this court that detainees were kicked from the upper part of their legs repeatedly, dangling a detainee by the ankles. Me no. Hello. Have you ever heard of a detainee slipping into unconsciousness? Near no. Yedler. No. Mr. Rodriguez, you've... Another former security branch member, Jan Rodriguez, was called to testify. He too did not offer any alternative facts that could assist the court. You've testified before this court that the one and only reason why you never came forward with the information in relation to what General Base and Captains Gloen van Niekerk uh, their attempt to get you to uh, fabricate evidence is because of their intimidating presence and you feared that um, if you disclosed uh, that information publicly that harm could come your way. Now, all three are deceased. Are you, are you aware of that? Yeah. Yes, I am. Do you know approximately when uh, those three passed away? <coughs> I do not have any idea as to when did they pass on, but I heard about it. Well, we, we, we will put uh, that particular information uh, to this court. But since you are aware that all three have passed away, how come you haven't come forward? Because they, they no longer pose a threat to you. You know what it was? That was no charges against me or there was no case against me so it was not important for me to have come clean and, and, and say <coughs> what they wanted me to say. Well, there was the Truth and Reconciliation Commission that invited people, especially members of the police service, and some generals appeared there those who were in command of the police, they appeared there in the TRC. Why didn't you find it necessary to go there and say there was this attempt to influence my testimony and uh, by such a person? Why didn't you do that? This was not important. Important, yeah. It's unimportant. It was not, it was not imperative for me to have gone to the police to go and report this type of an influence. But it was important for you <coughs> to protect yourself from harm coming to you by not telling the magistrate. Just yes. right at the time when I was still a police officer. Rodriguez, on his own version, participated in the cover-up to conceal the crime of murder as an accessory to the effect of murder. And he went on to commit perjury by presenting contradictory evidence before the 1972 as well as the, 19, as well as the 2017 inquest. A recommendation is to be made to have him investigated and prosecuted for these offenses. If you've lied for 46 years, that lie becomes reality. You see? So Rodriguez, he's still believing, you know, his lie. And I, I am of the view that there are people, all security branch from the establishment who are still around, are probably advising him, stick to your story. Because if you don't stick to it, and if you now confess, there may be a repercussion on that particular side there. I think this is what it's all about. Kaji regrets that the state failed to act on his brothers and other cases, while some of the alleged culprits were still alive. Look, the TRC was a perfect platform for victims and perpetrators to both come forward. And in, I don't just think in the matter of the Timor case, but in many, many other cases, victims came forward. 
none of the security branch officers were ever subpoenaed. None of them ever applied for amnesty. And in 1996, all of them were alive. So this was a perfect opportunity for all of them to have been investigated because we would have got a full version of events that had transpired. My attempts in 2002 again were unsuccessful. And again, at that particular time, all of the security branch officers were alive. So highly disappointing. What is still a source of pain for the family is that the truth about what happened has still not been revealed. Now with the former police facing charges and long jail sentences, the NPA says it takes more to build a solid case. In an inquest proceedings, decisions uh, and evidence is, is evaluated on a balance of probabilities. So when it comes to a criminal matter, the standard of proof is, is, is very high. It is beyond any reasonable doubt. Now, meaning you cannot take uh, what was uh, articulated during the inquest and say I'm taking someone to court on the basis of that and, and prosecute. Criminal investigations must be conducted. Hence, the court said the NPA must investigate. The NPA, PCLU, is working closely with the Hawks. During the inquest, there was a police official who was there, a colonel who was there with the prosecution team to ensure that everybody from the public who had uh, issues of their loved ones who mysteriously passed on in detention or who disappeared, uh, he was actually recording each and every information that he was getting with a view of investigating whatever came to, 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 to their disposal. have is regular. I'll have a new flying fish chill, please. And what you got there? It's a new light flying fish. It's got 35% less calories than your regular. Try one. Thanks. That is light. Yeah. Don't let your regular weigh you down. Try new flying fish chill. Andy, what did you make of the social media reaction to the news of the death of Makak? People are trying to grapple with the reasons why this is happening. I yeah. don't think that's being explained nearly enough. Professor? KZN has got a history of this factionalism. Why are police not getting to the bottom of the skirt? It's a national disaster that we still are dealing with political killings. Professor Daniels, just who do you think is behind these killings then? Let me put you on the spot there. The problems in this country started when the scorpions were disbanded. And is that what we're going to be seeing now? Deaths. Deaths, smear campaigns and stuff like that. It's got to stop. Stay tuned to Media Monitor and catch on analysts unpacking top stories every Sunday from 9 a.m. The Minister of Justice says there was no cover-up and justice took its course in the inquest into the death and detention of trade unionist Dr. Neil Agat. The inquest found that no one could be held responsible for his death. Dr. Neil Agat was one of the many people who died under mysterious circumstances as a result of their political activities. With some, inquests were held and concluded that no one was to blame. Some offering bizarre reasons, like activists slipped on a bar of soap or that they committed suicide. People that died in the hands of the security police, there was Pico, there was Dr. Agat, there, there were no less than over 65 people during this period of 15 years that the police actually killed people in order to punish them for taking part in our underground activities.
The Timor case has given many families hope that they too will one day find justice. Brothers Lash and Steve Mabelani attended the case and say they hope to have their murdered brother Matthew's inquest reopened. It was said he pushed himself from the 10th floor of John Forster Square. During 1976, around October, Matthews disappeared. Where he went to. All what we uh, had in surface was that he was in exile. But then we got the news that he skipped the country. Matthew uh, got arrested at the border, Botswana border, with six other escapees. We don't know who they are. We don't know what happened to the to the five escapees, but then he was the only one that was arrested and uh, brought to John Foster Square. All what we again got from the uh, media is that uh, he pushed himself, and uh, nobody is responsible for his death because he killed himself. Matthews loved life, you know. He was larger than life. He wouldn't have killed himself. Matthews was raised in a Christian family. Man. He was a politician and uh, he couldn't have just decided to kill himself in, in that fashion because I mean here is life that has to be led, you know, and then you kill you you killing yourself. So we are not accepting that. Anti apartheid lawyer advocate George Bezos wrote a book about the inquests that he was involved in, including the Timol case. He says the victims were not to be blamed for their own deaths. The book that I have written, no one to blame, question mark, deals with at least eight cases where it was shown beyond reasonable doubt that the people who died didn't die of natural causes or committed suicide. Oddly enough, Biko died. They lied. They said that Biko went to hunger strike, and that's why he died. Well, that was proved wrong. They said that he actually disobeyed a senior officer, and they were struggling. And Biko by mistake, hit his head against the wall, and that led to his brain damage, which led to his death. We also proved that that was nonsense. Biko, Agat, Godiwe, and a number of others, the names of which are not as popularly known as the three as I gave you. But it's a matter of record. And grandmothers come to the surface and say, hey, what are you going to do about my uh, grandfather's death? We don't send them away. It is going to be a long process. Just as perfectly can't be found easily. But I think that people who lost loved ones will feel uh, better if it is established that they were killed 
people wanted justice for all the people in South Africa. The Truth and Reconciliation Commission recommended 300 cases for prosecution, but only a few prosecutions have been seen. After many years of relentless pursuit of justice by the Similane family, four men have recently been charged for the murder of activist Nokutula Similane. Even that case is yet to proceed, as those charged want the state to pay the legal costs. What has happened after their arrest, they indicated that uh, in court that uh, they would uh, apply through the Minister of Police for legal representation. That is for the Minister of Police to fund their legal representation. The Minister of Police declined their request. They have since taken that matter on review. It is now pending in the High Court. That is why uh, the matter was postponed to ensure that uh, the review application is finalized relating to their legal representation uh, funding. Any information that is brought to the head of Priority Crimes Litigation Unit would be considered. And where necessary, where the information dictates that uh, inquests that were held must be reopened, they will be reopened. I can assure you the NPA has got a huge appetite to address these cases. We've got a responsibility to ensure that the families find closure. There must be people who are accountable, even if they account posthumously. Many families do not have the resources to pursue the cases of their loved ones. What then is the role of the state in these matters? Human Rights Commission coming on board would uh, alleviate that uh, challenge of uh, a resource as well as uh, human resources in terms of uh, conducting the investigations. So we are really uh, hopeful and appreciate the fact that the court has uh, directed that they come on board, we hope that uh, that would enable the police investigators to fast track their investigations uh, so that we ensure that the, the families of uh, those who passed on uh, find some closure. On the 46th anniversary of Ahmed Timal's death, just after the court found he was murdered, the Timal family sees this as a bittersweet victory after many years of knocking on doors. I think a huge sense of relief that the annals of history will now correctly reflect that Ahmed Timal did not commit suicide, but that he was rather murdered in police custody. And my mother would have been very happy. But can be a victory? I don't think it can be a victory. Because someone has died. She lost a son.